back home when my time was up. This is wonderful country and the people are great. But when Sandy, my wife and I, settled in Albuquerque four years ago, we discovered that New Mexico has a lot of problems. We're last among the states in education. We're last in overall health care. We're last in meaningful job creation. We're first in violent crime among the states per capita. But well, we've got to do something about this. And it begins with leadership in Santa Fe. And Jeff Apodaca is the leader that I think should be our next governor. Now, I've known his father, the former governor, his mother, the indomitable Clara, and I know Jeff. He has a plan as a successful businessman to try to solve all these problems. And in addition to having a plan, he's the kind of leader who does not work to divide people, but to bring us together. Don't take it from me, though. I want you to get to know Jeff. Listen to him. And then I think you'll decide, as I have, that our next governor, the one we should elect next year, is Jeff Apodaca. A governor needs to bring people together. A governor needs to bring partnerships together, both private and public partnerships, to grow jobs, to grow the economy. That's what the governor should be doing. We're ranked 50th in job creation. That has to change. We're sitting on $21.5 billion in reserve, and our political leaders are nitpicking over pennies. It's time we invest in New Mexico. In business, if you don't do things a different way, if you do things the same way every year, you will fail. So you always have to find a better way. You always have to evolve. What should be going up is going down. What should be going down is going up. Maybe those that are in should be going out. I'm not running because it's my turn. I'm running to turn around New Mexico. I was actually born and I was raised in Las Cruces. When my father became governor at age 12, we moved to Santa Fe. I'm really optimistic about the future. Having overcome cancer, I never gave up on myself. Our family motto is God, family, friends. We figured that really kind of works that way. Under Jeff Apodaca, administration, 225,000 new jobs, higher income, higher salaries, better opportunities for our kids. We're going to invest into technology. My father started year-round kindergarten. It's time this generation starts year-round preschool and also early family development. I'll never give up on New Mexico. I'm Jeff Apodaca, and I'm running for governor of the state of New Mexico. The next governor of New Mexico, Jeff Apodaca. Thank you, everybody. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. Great turnout. But we're here tonight because we're frustrated. We're here tonight because we're tired of being 50th. We're here tonight because we're tired of being at the bottom of all the good lists and the top of all the bad lists. But we're here because we can turn New Mexico around. But before we do that, let's talk about my family. Let's talk about a little bit about my family and my kids. This is my wife, Jackie. She grew up in La Albuquerque. And yes, we're a split family. She's an Aggie. I'm a Lobo. And my two sons, Asher and Gage. One who's actually a very... Loves the Lobos and loves the Aggies, so they're kind of following us too. But this is my family. But as we said earlier, I am actually was born in Las Cruces. My mother from the agricultural side, and my father from the city. My dad was actually a state senator um, that represented the southern part and became governor in 1975. And that's when we moved to Santa Fe. And I've always said, you know, I've always had kind of a, a nice opportunity where I grew up down south, but we also got to know the north. But the number one thing about our family was it was big. My parents had five kids in seven years. I just remember a lot of loud time, a lot of uh, crazy time. But we were just a normal family. My father happened to be governor. But the number one question that was always asked, what's it like to be the governor's kid? To me, it was just normal. My dad was a state senator, then the governor. We were used to campaigning. In fact, the two most memorable things I remember as a child, when I was 12, was I campaigned with my father in the summer. And it was really the first time I had one-on-one -on -one time with my dad. But more importantly, it was the first time I came to Taos. It was the first time I came to Española. It was the first time I experienced northern New Mexico and the state. And I got to see how New Mexico worked. But our family was always about giving back. But I was a kid with dreams. 
In fact, my dream, I was an athlete. My first job, Joe Friday's gas station, I got to pump gas at the age of 13. Yes, by the way, they used to pump gas. It was an automatic. I worked at the Santa Fe Downs. But I had dreams like everybody else. Guess what my dream was? I was going to play for the Dallas Cowboys. I was a football player. And this is me at Santa Fe High. I was an all-state running back. My senior year, we actually won state. But the reason I tell you that is because it's about never giving up on your dreams. It's about giving back to your community. Halfway through my senior year, I was actually stricken with cancer. I had a rare sarcoma of the soft muscle. Ninth person in the world ever have it. And I was diagnosed here in Santa Fe, treated in... Uh, um, um, treated at MD Anderson, and then treated at UNM Cancer Center. And the reason I tell you that, because I never gave up on my dreams. Even when the doctors told me you were never going to play football again. Even when the doctors told me you were going to try and save your life. Guess what? I never gave up on my dreams, and I came back and played college football for the University of New Mexico. And this is me starting safety my senior year and making a tackle against Nebraska. It's about giving back. It's about being prepared for opportunities. It's about never giving up. My wife and I actually started the Jeff Apodaca Celebration of Life Foundation 20 years ago. We've raised over $1.5 million to help cancer kids at UNM Cancer Center and Children's Hospital. In fact, we built a multimedia center up. But it's so important for us to give back and prepare our kids for their opportunities that we actually started a scholarship program for nurses. Because guess what? If a nurse has a degree, not only do they get paid more, our hospitals get more federal funding. I've taken those opportunities into the business world. I spent 32 years in media, CBS, AOL, and Univision. I worked in New York and LA. The last seven years I actually ran our seven states, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, uh, Utah, Nevada. I tell you that because I've seen how other cities and states have put a private-public partnerships together and have exploded their economies. So let's talk a little bit about that. I'm not running for governor because my dad was. I'm not running for governor because it's my turn. I'm running for governor to turn New Mexico around. It's our time. It's time we invest into New Mexico. But the two biggest reasons? My two sons, Asher and Gage. By the way, that's probably the last time they hugged each other at Christmas pictures. But let me tell you a little story about these. These two children of mine... They're nine years old. They represent the kids of our state. They represent the lack of political leadership that our leaders are doing and, and opportunities. They're building our kids. And that's what it's all about. Let me tell you a story. Literally, so, our, you know, we talked about my big family, and I don't remember a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my dad, right? We make sure, my wife and I, Jackie and I, make sure we have one-on-one -on -one time with our kids. Asher, the one on the left, three months ago, I'm, hang, I'm hanging out with him. And he literally says, Daddy, when you become governor, can you do me one favor? Being a nine-year-old, I'm thinking no more homework, extra computer time. You know what he says? Daddy, will you stop my friends leaving the state of New Mexico? My nine-year-old has, has lost three friends in the last 18 months because their families have moved for better opportunity. My nine-year-old knows that we've lost 150,000 jobs in our state. My nine-year-old knows that 37,000 people have left the state. Unacceptable. So let's talk about where we've been, where we are, and where we can go. New Mexico, our, our opportunities through the years. Actually, we've been around, you know this, we've been around four or 500 years. Our first economy was actually agriculture, which is big in northern New Mexico. We actually ex exported to Spain and France. We then got into ranching. Cattle, sheep. In the 1900s, we found copper, silver. We became miners. We found oil and gas. Those were our industries. But I want you to think about this. From the 1940s to today, I want you to think about this. Nuclear. Aerospace. Computers, right? The famous story of Albuquerque. Bill Gates, Microsoft, started in Albuquerque and left. Nanotechnology, 3D imaging, biotechnologies. Folks, these are industries, trillion dollar industries, hundreds and thousands of jobs, all started right here in New Mexico, but left. Why? Because we don't invest into ourselves. 
We don't invest to keep our companies here. Even in the 80s, we started filming television. And eight years ago, we decided, our political leaders decided, let's cut it back. A billion dollar economy for our state. We've actually cut it back. Now it's starting to slowly grow back, but we need to double that size. So where have we been? So where are we now? We're 50th in job creation. We're 50th in education. We have the highest unemployment in the country at 6.7%. Even in 2008, the worst recession since the Depression, we have lost more jobs. We have the lowest household income in the state, in the country, compared to other states. I want you to look at this graph. Look at this. We've actually stayed flat or gone down. Every state, every city around us, Las Vegas, Denver, Austin, every city that they always compare us to has actually exploded, except us. I want you guys to think of this. Illinois, Texas West, every state, 2.1 to 4.9% unemployment. We're at 6.7. Every state, 83 to 95% high school graduation rate. We're at 68. Highest high school dropout rate. Are we unlucky? Or political leadership? I don't know. I think maybe it's leadership. You see it here. Our agriculture. Our rural communities continue to struggle. Even we've talked about it. Our youth are leaving. Our families are leaving. New Mexican families are leaving for the first time in the history of, the country, of our state. 75% of UNM graduates leave our state. A third of our kids. In fact, the other day in the Albuquerque Journal, we literally, if you look at 40 to 59-year-olds are flocking out of our state. And they're taking our kids with them. Folks, those are the next generation of jobs. Those are the next economic jobs. Those are the next entrepreneurs. Washington, D.C. cannot solve our problems. In fact, the last time I looked, we're the United States of America, and we can fight and come bicker and all we want. But it's about time we invest in New Mexico. It's about time we invest into our strengths. It's time our political leaders stop bouncing around from office to office and start focusing in on us, and that's what our campaign's about. We have to have the encouragement and the leadership to be New Mexicans. We don't want to be Arizona, California, or New York. We're New Mexicans. I am tired of being the incubator of companies and jobs for the country, for the world. So what if? What if we do things a better way? Now, if my wife was here tonight, she'd call me the what if guy. There he goes, that what if thing. In fact, by the way, you sports nuts? I'm in the media, I was in the media business. I think the greatest invention is the DVR. I love watching football, college football, and high school football, because I play back every play and say, God, what if they did this? What if they did that? It was like reminding me of my football days. My wife calls me the what if guy. I have challenged my entire companies. I have challenged, whether it was the doctors, my football team, or in business. Guys, what if we try something better? What if we do something better? What if our political leaders invested in us? So how do we do that? Let's talk about that. We're broke, right? We have no money. Our political leaders fight over $20, $30 million. We're broke. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Colorado, 2.1% unemployment. $500 million economy, six times larger than ours. Their investment funds, $550 million. You look at Louisiana, Oregon, Alabama, North Dakota, $1.2 to $3.8 billion. Wyoming, a state very similar to us, oil and gas, agriculture. Half the population of us, they sit on $5.4 billion. California, the sixth largest economy in the world. And Governor Jerry Brown, six months ago, is literally high-fiving because they got $7.9 billion. New Mexico, $100 million economy. Highest unemployment. Highest graduation, uh, lowest graduation rate, highest dropout rate. You've seen the video. You've seen what we say. We're the first campaign, we're the first people to talk about it. We sit on $21.6 billion, the third largest investment funds in the country, 14 largest in the world. Folks, you look at Brazil, Australia. Now, last time I looked, Australia is a continent, right? Mexico, on the south. 
Canada from the north. These four countries and a continent, we have more money combined. We invest 100% in Wall Street, we invest 100% out of state, do nothing to invest in ourselves. So what if our political leaders tell us those are rainy day funds? Those are for our future. Folks, we're in the middle of a hurricane and the roof just got blown off. And we will not invest into repairing our, 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 our house, our roof. So what if? What if we take just 5% of our investment funds and invest it into ourselves? Invest it into the economy, into the schools, into our infrastructure. Guess what? We would still have $20.5 billion left. We would still have the third largest permanent funds in the country, 14 largest in the world, and what our political leaders will tell you is we'll lose interest on our budget. Guess what? We wouldn't lose anything. Our budget wouldn't change. So what if we just invest 5% into our future? Well, let's talk about how we're going to do it, how we're going to turn the economy around. Infrastructure. We have to invest in our infrastructure, into our schools, our sequias, our, our arroyos, and our bridges. We are in Mora today. We are in Las Vegas. We need to invest into our highways and our roads. I was talking to some of you earlier today. Literally, you drive to New Mexico. You literally said, you can tell when you cross the border from New Mexico to Colorado. It's about investing in ourselves for our infrastructure. Small business. 95% of our economy, you're sitting in. 95% of our economy is small business. Now look, I'm not against recruiting and trying to bring businesses in our state. But folks, until we, until we invest into ourselves, companies will not come here. Yes, we're going to have one or two. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars investing in trying to bring companies outside, but we won't invest into small business. We won't help small business grow. In fact, we penalize them. In fact, you know what we do? We actually try and bring companies in to compete and take their business away. Doesn't make sense. Investments in startups. Between our labs and our universities, we are still starting companies today. In fact, I'm on the Innovate ABQ board that we're doing this innovation district, and I'm an advisor to UNM, and STC. STC, the tech transfer at the university, they tech transferred 12 companies last year. Two are in New Mexico, 10 left the state. Why did they leave the state? Because we don't invest in them. And guess what? Colorado, Arizona, Salt Lake City, Utah, are picking off our companies. So what if we invest into, into our own companies and technology? We talked about the industries we started here. Here's a crazy thing. I think most of you know this. We live in a state that's ranked number two in possible renewable energies. But we're ranked 48th in renewable energies. Now let me tell you something about renewable energies. I'm not worried about powering your house. I'm not worried about powering this building. That's going to happen naturally. As governor, we're going to power California. We're going to power Arizona. There's a trillion dollars of private capital that's looking to invest in renewable energies. They'll invest with us. In fact, some of them don't want us to invest at all. They just want to invest and do it themselves. Guess what? We're going to invest together because we're going to have skin in the game, and I want some of that revenue. Let me tell you something. In today's market, you can literally generate energy, solar energy, and build it out at two cents a kilowatt. Now, I have no idea what a kilowatt means, by the way. But guess what I do know? If we can generate it at two cents, folks, California will buy it from us at eight to 11 cents a kilowatt. That's an 80% return on our investment, and that's a new revenue stream of taxes coming to our state. So what if? What if we invest in renewable energies? Oil and gas. Everybody talks about let's penalize oil and gas. Let's tax them more. Let's stop them. Look, let's be realistic. Oil and gas is 35% of our economy. They're New Mexican families. They're New Mexican businesses. You know what we have to do with them? We have to invest with them and work with them to do it better. The number one issue is methane leaks. Right? Half of our wells are 50 years old. Folks, we can invest with them and recap. That creates new technology jobs, that creates more jobs. Guess what it also does? It's two and a half 
It's 2.5 to $5 million to do it. But every expert tells me we would generate 100 to $140 million of more revenue for our state. I don't know, man. That's a pretty easy investment. So what if? Biotechnology and research. UNM Hospital, Children's Hospital, UNM Medical School. I don't know if you guys know this. We actually live in a state with one of the top research medical schools in the country. We have created 400 patents, 400 patents last 10 years at UNM between Alzheimer's and cancer research. 400. 50 of them are being commercialized for companies today. Guess what? Eight in the state of New Mexico, 42 have left the state. Why did they leave the state? We talked about it. It's about investing in them. It's about infrastructure. It's about training our kids. Because that's what they'll tell you. We don't have any investments, and we don't have a trained workforce. We're going to change that. Medical, nursing, dental. We've talked about it. Folks, these are economic drivers for our economies. This is economic drivers for our rural communities. We're short 200 doctors in our state. We're short 1,500 nurses. You have one of the best nursing programs in the state right here in Taos. And we do nothing. And, to, and, and they tell me they turn down nurses all the time. Why? Because we haven't invested to expand. So what if? What if we do that? And if you give back to us, we'll give back to you. You go to medical school, do your, do your residency somewhere else, because you probably have to. You come back and move to Taos for seven years, we'll pay for your medical school. You go to nursing and you pick someplace we need you, like Taos, we'll pay for your nursing school. And if you're a teacher, we'll do the same thing. Because teachers, doctors, and nurses, those are economic drivers. You know a doctor, for every doctor we bring to your community, it's $1.8 million to your community. It's three to, three to six extra jobs to your community. So what if? What if we invest into our kids? Agriculture. Let's talk about this. Apples. The reason the apples are up there, you know this. We're in an area that used to be the third largest producers of apples 40 years ago. Between Dixon and, San, and, and Española. Did you know our Española growers can't even sell their apples to Española High School? Hops. We're sitting in one right now. Breweries. Our breweries buy hops from around the country. Colorado, Illinois, Idaho. What grows, what grows natural up here? Hops. We can create a co-op with our agriculture families in New northern New Mexico and literally grow five different types of hops to make beer. And every local brewery I've talked to, we can actually, we can actually uh, sell it to them. Now let me tell you something. Our political leaders don't understand a word that we use in business. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this word before. It's called exporting. We can literally grow more hops than we need in New Mexico, and we can export them to Denver, to Colorado, to Arizona. Hemp and cannabis. Some people are telling me not to talk about it. Hemp's a no-brainer. We know the medical benefits. We know the industries it affects and it creates. We know the manufacturing we can do. By the way, 75% less water. And in northern New Mexico, you can get as many as three harvests a year. They grow as high as aspens. They grow like weeds. They use 75% less water. And we can manufacture. Guess what? The third largest manufacturer of car seats in the world in China, India. Folks, they're in Juarez, Mexico, four and a half, five hours away. We can literally grow hemp in northern New Mexico, manufacture it, create trucking and, and driving, go down to Santa Teresa, the seventh largest port that we're going to explode and, and grow, and export to, export to Mexico. And they literally export them right back to us, to our manufacturing. Cannabis. Look, we talked about me having cancer before. My father in 1978 actually signed the Medical Marijuana Research Act into law. We were the first state to have medical marijuana in our, in our country. Never knowing two years later when I went through chemotherapy, I took pills, I took shots, I took so many shots in my thigh that you literally couldn't fill my thigh for two years. Guess what got me through chemotherapy? Medical cannabis. We know the medical benefits. 
We know the opportunities. We have learned from Colorado. We have learned from Oregon. Folks, this is an opportunity. We can get ahead of the curve. 32,000 jobs, over $200 million of tax revenue. Let me tell you something. Las Vegas, Nevada legalized it July 1st. Las Vegas starts out on July 1st. They literally ran out in 10 days. Last Friday in the Denver Post, they literally had a lottery check. And they sat there holding it up and did a press conference because Colorado made $500 million in tax revenue. Their tourism is up 30%. So what if? What if we do something different and invest in agriculture? Tourism, very important to tell us. 10% of our economy, between our Mexican culture, our Indian culture, our Spanish culture, and yes, even our outlaws down south. But guess what? We have hunting, fishing, snow skiing. And we do a pretty good job marketing ourselves outside the state. You know what we don't do? We've literally taken power away from the cities, from your communities, to market yourself. 73% of New Mexicans do not go to Hawaii. They, they don't go to Europe. Guess what they do? They go on three, they go on three to four trips a year, three or four day weekend trips. To San Antonio, Texas. To California, to Nevada, to Arizona. Now we may never be able to compete with California. My kids are bugging me about going to Harry Potter right now. My kids want to go see their friends and move to California and go see the beach. But folks, if we just market to ourselves and we kept half those families in New Mexico, that's four to five hundred million dollars more a year into our economy. Now doesn't that make sense? What if we invest and do something a better way? We talked about our jobs. We gotta talk about education. Our education is the number one issue we have to deal with besides jobs. I guess the number two issue. Our educational plan is zero to 20. We have to educate our kids zero to 20 now. My father actually started year round kindergarten in 1975. That was great 45 years ago. We now realize that we actually have to start younger. We are going to start preschool and early child development for every kid in New Mexico. But we're also going to do inter, uh, early family intervention. We have to give our families the tools to be better parents, to educate our kids. After school programs. The other day, you know, my kids are in third grade. The other day, uh, one of my kids is a really good artist. And my wife uh, hangs him up in our kitchen. And I told Asher the other day, I go, Asher, when are you going to bring Daddy some more artwork? Well, I'll do it next year, Dad. I go, no, no, Asher, I really want you to bring some artwork. You have, Asher, you have, you have art on Wednesdays, right? He says, no, Dad, I have it next year. I go, what are you talking about? And, of course, the voice from the kitchen. You ever listen to me? And there's my wife. My children in our public schools, they get art every other year. They get science every other year. So what if? What if we invest in after-school programs? We have cut so many after-school programs away from our kids, our kids aren't staying engaged in our schools. And you wonder why we have a dropout rate. We're not preparing our kids for their opportunities. We have to change that. And once again, our kids, you invest in us, we'll invest in you. We're going to create low-interest debt financing and low-interest loans for our children because we sit on $21.5 billion and we invest it outside the state, it's time we invest a little bit into our kids and into, into our state. So what if? What if we do things a better way? What if we do things a different way? Guess what? 225,000 new jobs. $1.8 billion of new tax revenue. 200 more doctors, 3,200 more nurses, and everybody in that school system will be bringing home thousands of dollars more. So here it is, folks. Take a picture. I want you to pull out your phones right now. Take a picture. Here is our plan. Our political leaders are going to start talking about this because this is exactly what we're going to invest. We're going to take 5% and we're going to invest it into these. That's going to create 225,000 new jobs and $1.8 billion of new tax revenue. So what if? What if we invest into ourselves? I'll hold that up. There's some people taking pictures. Last chance. Hurry up. Take a picture. Post it. 
This is our plan. We have to invest in our kids, we have to invest in healthcare, we have to invest in industries. Send it to your friends and post it. I might have to come back to this slide. Guess what else that'll do? That's gonna create higher wages for all. And folks, let me tell you something. My mother and the Democratic women have been fighting for equal pay for women. It's time we give women equal pay and equal pay for everybody. And I'm tired of talking about minimum wage. It's time we start talking about a living wage for everybody. And we talked about job training. There are 41,000 jobs today that we subcontract out of state or go on field in the trade skills. We need to start training our kids in the skill in the trade skills. I have a buddy of mine that literally builds engines for sprint car racers. He learned that at Santa Fe High. We have cut so many programs out of our after school programs and so many trade skills that our kids. Last week I was in Las Cruces and I was talking to some developers. And one of the developers literally told me, you know, I can't find any, you know, no one wants to work here. I can't find any framers. I go, hold on, hold on. Those are two totally different conversations. No one wants to work. You can't find a framer. You can't find a framer because we haven't trained our kids. The framers left in 2008. We've got so many programs pushing our kids to college and higher education. I'm not against that. But you know what our universities don't want to talk about? University of New Mexico has a 44% dropout rate between freshman and sophomore year. We need to train our kids. We need to keep create lanes for our kids. You want to go into medical? Here's your lane. You want to go to, you want to, go to college? Here's your lane. You want to become a welder and make $70,000 a year out of high school? Here's your lane. You want to become a coder and start learning programming and computers and have a telecommuting job? Here's your lane because they pay $83,000 a year. We also need to work with earned family and medical leave. Folks, it's going to be a conversation. If conservative Arizona, their political leaders and business leaders in their community can agree we can agree. And we have to give tax relief for families, specifically in the child care area. And it's important here too. We need to embrace the job sharing economies. It's important for our middle class. It's important for tourism. So what if? What if we invest in New Mexico? What if we invest in ourselves? What if we invest into a new guy who's never held political office who knows the system, who's upset at the system, and who has a plan to turn New Mexico around. So I want to thank you guys tonight, and I'll open up the questions, and you can always go to Apple 18. Thank you very much.